so I, what I now have learned were probably my first symptoms of endometriosis happened when I was 16. And I had my period for two months straight where I was just bleeding nonstop. Um, and that summer, we, I was born in Brazil and my mom is Brazilian, my dad is American. When I was eight, we moved to New Orleans. And that summer was the first time that I was back in Brazil after, after a long time. And um, I remember it was, it was kind of like this intense experience because I was back in Brazil and I was there for the whole summer and I was just bleeding nonstop. And my mom was taking me to doctors there who were like, well, we don't know what it is, but it's normal, you know, just like, it'll be fine. And then we got back to the US and my mom took me to doctors in New Orleans who were like, well, we don't know what it is, but here, just take some birth control. So that was my first time taking birth control um, when I was 16 because of my period. Did make, you know, my mens, my ongoing nonstop menses stop. Um, and then I was on birth control for a number of years. I don't remember having, um, like painful periods during those years when I was a teenager and in college. But I do remember having just feeling unwell for a few years. So I decided when I was, I think around 20 in college, I decided to stop taking birth control. And I stayed off it until I was 23 when I went back to Brazil and I was getting a master's degree in Brazil. And there I had a doctor prescribe me a different type of birth control called Diane 35, which is no longer even on the market um, because it, it was considered like really bad. Um, and I had horrible side effects, not uh, maybe horrible is too, is too strong as a word, but I mean, I just, I had mood swings. I gained 15 pounds. I was crying every day, like nonstop. Everything was just, I was, I was like, I think in, in probably in a state of depression. Um, and so I got off it after just a few months. And so then in my twenties, the experience that I had was of, of, of endometriosis symptoms was that I wouldn't have my period for three months straight. Um, and then I would have a very strong period and with a lot of pain with, um, like I, I would, I took a leave every time I had my period in my twenties. Um, and I would, I would have to take a several leave in a day. And I was, I remember I would be like in the shower, just on the floor of the shower for an hour. Um, I, in August, I ended up doubled over in severe pain, a pain that I, I never had. I had two natural childbirths. I'd gone through labor. This was like, labor was not painful at all compared to this pain that I had. And that was the, the wake up call that I finally needed to actually figure out, okay, what is going on? If you were my daughter, I would operate on you tomorrow. And I was like, wow, okay. Um, so for me, it was really just the gravity of my condition sinking in and sinking in. And he's got this great, his great technological whiteboard um, in his office. And so he, he drew for me um, the, you know, basically what, 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 it, what the endometriosis looks like inside of my body. Um, he explained to me what surgery would mean. Um, you know, so it was, the consultation was really him giving me his viewpoint and opinion on what my condition was and giving me his opinion as to what I needed to do or should do moving forward. Um, but he also said, you know, I want you to think this through if you want to come back. And I went by myself and he said, if you want to come back with a friend um, and, you know, talk more about the surgery and what that would entail and so forth. Um, but I left his, his office that day with 
the belief that I need surgery. I mean, I, I fully understood that day. What I found out after the surgery was that Dr. Suchkin believed that the surgery would be about two and a half to three hours. Um, and in fact, it was more like four and a half, five hours. And that's because my endometriosis was so much more advanced than um, he had thought it was based off the MRI. I mean, you, Dr. Suchkin excised the cyst that was inside my right ovary. Um, so he, after he took out the cyst, then he sewed my ovary back up and then he put um, suspensions on both of my ovaries so that I had to keep those suspensions in place for a full about 24 even 30 hours after the surgery um, and then what they found was I had extensive kind of old tissue endometriosis between my uterus and my and my colon so that my uterus and my colon were stuck together uh, my uterus and, and, and I guess my rectum were stuck together. In about the last week and a half is really when I, st I kind of turned to the corner and I've been like, wow, I feel much better. You know, I mean, I still, I still feel um, the incision points a little bit. Like I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I certainly I'm not like picking up heavy things. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm still taking it easy in some ways, but I'm, I'm able to get back to life. Um, so that for me was, was really, that for me was really great um, to just kind of be like, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good.